Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? May I ask, so I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Elena Connolly. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching the show live at a later date. Although this is a recording today, so um, it's not quite live. Um, but it does mean a lot for both Elena and me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women at crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present they can take control of their destiny in the here and now and I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey a mini guided meditation of angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest like today's guest Elena Connolly who will be talking about soul worthy wealth and how to activate your soul gifts to be wealthy. Now Elena is a devoted reader of the Akashic an energy healer, a karmic clearer, and she represents an infinite team of light workers to be at your service. Now, she started helping women nearly 30 years ago to find well-paid work and training women in new cutting-edge technology, which 30 years ago was pretty amazing. Now, after taking a break, Elena followed her soul goal and manifested jobs with ease, always challenging herself to follow her, intu her intuition, but realize that we are more than our jobs, minds, bodies, and feelings. We are souls with an abundance of energy waiting to be called. So she created Soul Worthy You for wealth creators and smart spirited souls like yourselves who want to connect with all things, um, a Kajaic, manifestation, law of attraction, spirituality, metaphysics, mindset, wealth, money, life, coaching, and online business. And with testimonials such as, my life is finally mine, that I'm no longer blocked by forces, that my soul got entangled in previous lives, I can use my gifts and strength of my soul's true nature to realise my goals and improve the lives of others. And Elaine is by far one of the most talented and compassionate healers I've ever had the honour of working with. So without further delay, hello Elaine and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you for that really warm welcome as well. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> remember my stuff. <laughs> exactly. You know, sometimes we, sometimes we need a bit of reminder. Reminding. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. I do all of that. <laughs> exactly. You know, sometimes we, sometimes we do forget that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so before we start this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you, um, but although we're not live today, you can um, actually ask questions and comments um, and thoughts as both. Elaine and I want you to be part of this conversation, so please don't be shy. Um, we will say hello to everyone who comments and we will answer any questions or comments um, once the show is finished um, or, at a, or at a later date. Um, so if you do leave a comment, we will um, reply. We will reply to it. So please do not be shy. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all the other recordings. So Elena, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how we can activate our soul gifts to be more wealthy? Oh, thank you, Ray. So, um, well, a little bit about me. I um, I've always been highly intuitive. I then it was very much like um, so intuitive that I actually thought there was something wrong with me, <laughs> as I think many awakened beings feel. Um, and so strongly intuitive, it actually got me into trouble um, in a way that I would often, um, you know, s say something to someone uh, from a purely intuitive level, and they would like look at me, kind of like square up all oh, like strangely. Yeah as if um, had someone been gossiping about me and I would have thought we would have had a conversation and they would have said, you know, whatever it is they would have said, because how would I know what I know? And that was quite isolating actually, because it was quite difficult to connect with people and be very present. And then the other thing as well is often the other extreme was people would often confide in me some really, um, um, 
certainly some of the, the people who have confided, which I would never break a confidence, uh, you know, of an individual, but, you know, things like one, um, and this was like years and years ago, she, she said she had been, um, and this was before it was talked about openly, but she had been raped as, as a schoolgirl on their way home from school in the park. And we were, you know, we were having like this kind of like quite a jolly evening or whatever and quite a lot of wine had flowed. And then she, ch- ch- you know, shared this story and I was like, oh, and that happened a lot. A lot of women, I have to say more so than men, but a lot of women would confide these really um, traumatic experiences that happened to them. And I wasn't quite sure what, like what to do with it apart from listening and like you know obviously really my heart would go out to them and it it kind of it it was a problem because it either I was sort of saying things with people and they were like oh how can you know that or they were the other extreme was people were and women were confiding their deepest darkest secrets and I was like well I I I I don't know what to like am I meant to do is this like does this happen to everyone so I actually found things very difficult and quite quite isolating because um I was never quite sure what was what was going to happen so anyway um I have <clears throat> been through I think the awakening process we often think we'll just go through it for like a stint and then that'll be it we'll be fully awakened <laughs> and you know we won't have to do there's probably not much more we've got to do you know because we've connected with this realm or that realm and what i would say to anyone watching this and in, in your community is that it's constantly evolving um and even for myself i've been i've been connecting up like now to the 16th dimension you know so it's constantly constantly evolving and i mean that's the fascinating part about it Another big issue at the moment is that our, our consciousness and our spiritual evolution is accelerating mm-hmm. at a pace of knots. And for many of us um, who have, have been doing this work for a little bit, you know, um, it's, it's, it's not as we thought it would be. So I think that's the other thing. I think a lot of us start off with, you know, maybe like something like The Secret. I know that woke up a lot of people, you know, which was, I mean, it's great. It's it's a huge door right now, you know. Um, But honestly, just as you think you might have arrived, there's going to be something else, okay? So I think it's very important that people connect in community. So like Ray's got her community. I've got Soul Worthy Wealth and Soul Worthy You on Facebook. And it's very important that we have that sense of community around us because, um, I read the Akashic, so I'll explain what the Akashic are and explain why community is important. So the Akashic sits at the fifth dimensional level. It's your soul record. It's where your soul is. And it's a record of all your incarnations, all your thoughts, all your feelings, all your actions in those previous incarnations. And there's no such thing as time in the Akashic. So there's, it's, it's big. And to be honest, I was accessing it without realizing I was accessing it and being very, very overwhelmed for for good reason. Um, In the Middle Ages, the Akashic records were closed off to humanity. So Akashic is actually a Sanskrit word. We might not have called it that in the Middle Ages, but it was closed off because people were using them for negative reasons. So then um, a few decades ago Edward J Casey Edward J Casey he opened them up so he's quite a famous reader and then in the more recent years people are like it's it's growing so the Akashic is going to become more and more relevant in people's lives it's not about your past life but it's about what's happening now and why I say to be in community so what happens is as your consciousness rises and you start to connect with you know light workers like Ray or light workers like myself you know, you might have an angel card reading or you have an experience of angels or whatever your experience might be of the nature spirits or star seeds or whatever it might be. What also ends up happening is that we, time doesn't mean as much as it used to mean. And how does that play out? Well, people say, oh, time is an illusion. Well, it is, but it's one of all the soul groups we all agreed to and signed up to as part of our human experience. So it's very important. But why it plays up in our journeys is that we can end up living unconscious patterns and old karma. Now, good karma, of course, we're, that's great. 
But what's happening for a lot of light workers is that as we rise up, our consciousness rises, we're actually hitting up against and we're pulling down this old karma, often negative karma that we think, well, why has, you know, why has that happened? I see a lot of very disempowered light workers. And often some of the things that I say are almost like heresy. They don't, <laughs> they don't go down because I'm, I'm like, we've got to move on. You're not going to stay where you're going to stay. So what's going on as our consciousness rises, it will carry on rising. It's accelerating. It doesn't stop. There are a lot of light workers who, who awoke, as it were, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 years ago. So yeah. kind of like this older kind of crew, as it were. And this is what someone told me from a very well-known publication that's internationally renowned. She, she was just chatting to me. And she said, oh, there's an issue between this older light worker crew and newer awakened souls. Because what's happening is that the older crew, now not everyone, but some in this community haven't actually progressed they've stayed stuck where they are yeah now what's happening now is that we've got a lot of um and people who are like younger than me younger than ray are waking at higher levels of consciousness than even we are and they're like they're trying to they're like what is going on here because it's very difficult for them to find mentors and some of there's a lot of um what i would call spiritual hubris you know, it's a lot of in. So I'm not saying everyone in that because I've had a lot of you know amazing teachers who I would thoroughly recommend. However, you know, if you are in that community, it's like your consciousness will carry on evolving. The other thing that's happening is we're able as well now. We've never had this experience before, really. We never have. Sometimes people say, "Oh, what about Egypt?" Well, you know, that we are not living in Egypt in those times. We are living in you know, the early 20s, early 2000s, you know, it's, this is unprecedented. In terms of that, we have this high level of consciousness, as women in particular, which is, is really my thing. Um, we have choice like we've never had before. So as a woman, you've got a bank account, Ray's probably got a bank account. Oh, yeah. You've got your own property, you might rent it, you might buy it, you are legally allowed to own your own property. And you probably have some means of transport, you know, it, you it, probably you have, or if you want to leave your, your sacred home, you can go and get on transport that you want to get onto. Now, as a woman, you have never had that before. You really, really haven't. You had to go and ask, you wouldn't have had your own bank account. Even women up to like the 1970s in England didn't have their own bank account. So I know some, some people will have done, but actually for women, very unusual um and in terms of i mean even i was um someone i know in switzerland they were saying i think it was uh, there was a district in switzerland now switzerland is a highly developed country you know yeah. uh, highly educated um very self-aware you know intellectual very prosperous i think it was up to the mid 80s that there was a district in switzerland that women still couldn't vote Wow. Now, I think at other places in Switzerland could, but there was one particular where women didn't actually have the vote. Now, that was in the 1980s. That is not that, you know, I'm not talking about 1750, you know. So as women, as the soul incarnated now, you have more choice and power than ever before. And as a soul, when you're, because I mentioned the time, you're kind of you have access to all of that but you haven't got anything really to refer back to so you're kind of there like with your money or whatever it is and it's actually all really new for you <laughs> yeah you know and what's often what I see happening is women in particular living these unconscious patterns out um, with money with their career and that shows up hey presto when we do things like gender pay gap you know, surveys and stuff like that it comes up all the time. Um, so anyway, so that's my, you know, really mission and, and passion is to empower women with really sharing that actually, what are your gifts? Because we're not all one. We all incarnate as very individual souls. Thank God. And we're very, like, raised, 
exactly like race skills are different to, like we're very different mm. and then it's great that we get to be together so there's nothing yeah. like it, it's perfect and it's not that we're not all one so this is what i mean about community and what has happened in our in our past incarnations is that as these bright rays of light we have literally been fed on and we've often taken choices against our true divine nature we've not spoken out we have taken vows which have been beaten into us over lifetimes and we've been divided we've been set up against each other yeah we've been you know and it's been very very traumatic so now this is your first lifetime and this is like really flipping exciting this is your first lifetime that we get things like the internet we can connect you can watch this in 10 years from now two years from now you know you can watch it in your, on your own terms you get to choose when you watch it you get to you know choose you subscribe and everything else you get to choose that you get to allow your awareness to grow and then you get to sort of make informed choices about what you want to do next and what you want to create in your life and you're not here to work yourself to death you are here to create you are here to learn you are here to be supported on the way and it is such a free time it's it's almost there is something i call intuitive overwhelm because there is so much going on and particularly when you're sensitive i'm sure like most of your audience are highly empathetic in your own right it's a lot it's a lot so that's why it's important to to have that sense of community so anyway i've talked talked a lot there <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, you know it, it it actually brings a, a lot of things in you know we've all been working towards this 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 part in humanity you know and it is uh you know to be alive um now uh, whether you're a man or a woman in in this life now it's absolutely amazing because we've got so many opportunities we know so much we're we're so more spiritually aware now um, as a collective rather than individuals um, that it's that, that you know we need to keep getting that out to people that no matter what you what's going on in in your life or what's going on in the world in the news now we are all you know lucky to be here at, at, at this time you know I've, I've had about 300 odd past lives I've been here since time you know I've gone through so much in past life and stuff and it's like I've actually got here now and it's like wow it's it's amazing and community is such a big thing it's not about being individuals anymore it's about being your own person and following your own destiny but it's working with others because it's a collective mm. we're so strong and powerful and that and we can create anything we want yeah yeah and it, it, it's about doing i'm glad you said that and it is about being having that sense of community and also it's about being your own person mm. it's not mm. about just going with whatever but it's about knowing this is what i want to create and th these are you know these are the people that i who will get to see that and get to enjoy that co-creation that i'm going to do you know that i'm going to make happen in this world so it, it you know it's unprecedented um one thing that i say um and this is you know when i've sort of run like group meditations you know and wealth is very important um i'm talking yes about abundance that has somewhat disempowered many light workers because there's a big money wound mm -hmm. with light workers in particular some of it is because of these vows of poverty that we, we we're actually all reliving now which is just it doesn't make any logical sense but that's kind of what's going on at a karmic yeah, level yeah. And then the other issue is really with money is it's actually a, it, money is a divinely feminine energy. It's purely money is feminine. So money, it like it's purely feminine. Banks and structures and credit cards or whatever it might be. They are structures. They're the masculine element. And I'm not dissing men here because that's the, I don't think that's going to help anyone. So it's not about that. But what I'm saying is this divine energy of money has almost has been trapped from us and at the moment as an energy it's reaching out and it's like it wants to connect with you and it wants to connect with you in the way of that you get to shine your light whatever that might be you get to share your gift and your gift is truly unique it really really is and 
something that, you know, once, um, so something that I'm doing is something called Akashic Wealth Streaming. And Akashic Wealth Streaming, and this is interesting. So Akashic Wealth Streaming, and it's new rules for light workers. And when I say that, I can see the triggers that go off in people. And I'm like, okay. And the first rule is there are no rules. Yeah, I like that. So the first rule are there are, that, that's, and it's kind of, and it, it's knowing that you've got that freedom. Now that is that you do things that are no harm to others, that don't yeah. karmically infringe another. Um, so that is respecting the other person's will, the other person's point of view, um, that you're not karmically hurting them um, from an emotional, mental or physical perspective. It's very important. I make that clear. And Akashic Wealth Streaming is literally, I've got guides as far as the eye can see in the Akashic, if you can imagine that, who um, I'm part of the McKizzledick Priesthood and part of what they want to do, so I'm very adept at working with energies and so on, but what they want to do is they want to connect light workers to this energy of money. And so that because there is, there is actually all this money around and available but it's been kept from us by some of the choices we've made in past lives and now you get to make choices in alignments that share your soul gifts that you do some stretching so some of it might not feel very comfortable um so but you get to stretch your goals and you get to you get to share with others and you know like i was saying to a group the other day like can you imagine if if all of us watching this now if if i was a billionaire ray was a billionaire everyone in your community were billionaires can you imagine the impact we would have on the world the influence yeah. we would have not just because it's money but the people that we would become in that wealth creation process and the influence that we would have on the education system yes on how we produce our food on how we look after our environment we would be insistent i am sure we would be insistent that we we use and create sustainable energy we would be insistent as these very powerful people in the world with this huge buying influence with this huge influence and this huge impact that we've already made sharing our gifts we would be insistent that we really look at this issue of plastics and nanoplastics and microplastics in our oceans. We would be insistent. We would not put food into our mouth that had plastic in it. So can you imagine? So this is what I mean, this subject of, and it is money. It's not just abundance. A lot of what's happened, abundance is great, and I wish it on everyone. I have had very abundant times where I've been financially very, very poor. And I've had times when I've been financially very wealthy and not felt very abundant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what has kind of happened is there has been this and it, it your journey kind of will go, will, will go up and down as it were, you know, it's not going to remain constant. So what has happened is that the abundance um, manifesto is great because it's not all about my, and when you're, when you're nearer to identifying yourself for ego it's important that you hear that abundance message it's important that you learn it i suspect i kind of feel for anyone watching this you've already heard the abundance message you've got that <laughs> okay you now really need to look at this money scenario that's going on in your life and it's now about really connecting to um what i call your intuitive wealth and I get that that's very overwhelming because you've got so much information feeding out. It's about thinking, OK, what's the right kind of support that I can get for me? And then it's about thinking, well, OK, how can I share this, you know, with others? Um, and it really is about looking at that, which often some people at this point, they, they've kind of shut down. They're like, oh, well, I don't need money or, you know, all of those things. Yeah. Money, honestly, we have agreed as so as a all the soul groups agreed it. It's a novelty here on planet Earth. It's like fast from a soul perspective. It's like, oh, how fascinating. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, because we don't use that anywhere else in the world, in the universe, you know. So it's really unique and it is part of our, it's part of your spiritual involvement and development to really become that goddess of money, to become that master of money. And 
to use it for the tool it is it's not meant to be controlling you it's meant to be the other way around and yeah, yeah. that might be a journey that takes you more than two weeks to <laughs> to work around <laughs> yeah could be a bit long could be a bit longer than that yeah yeah so that's really what my you know huge huge message is for people it's to really kind of look at that and you know start because as you start to you know manifest and become also become into alignment with who you are your higher self it's you know it's not having that trigger around creating wealth it's not having that trigger around money and um you know and, and for, like for a lot of us certainly me included that is a that is a bit of a i'm sure more than one lifetime of a trip you know yeah um yeah. However, in this lifetime, we're accelerating so fast that it's likely um, we will be able to heal all of that. And but this, it's it's just about in the very first, just about noticing it, you know, within yourself, and noticing um, what your triggers are around it, and then actually going on to thinking, okay, how can I actually, you know, how can I create wealth in a way that's in alignment. To who I am at some level because that's really where the gift is and that's really um nothing and actually no interesting enough no amount of money feels as good as sharing your soul gifts <laughs> exactly and you know and, and then that's what we you know the, the the money is there to help us um to do that to actually bring you know a, it's able for us to help and reach more people um Absolutely. with it um so what's intuitive wealth intuitive wealth i've got something on my website called ignite your intuitive wealth which is just coming out actually i think it'll be out by the time this is out and one of one issue that i i see a lot of and i i have absolutely you know and there are days i it still happens now is having our intuition being so switched on like it is now um it's great because that's what we've been striving for and yet at the same time it's very overwhelming because you've got so much information coming through. It's like, well, what do I do? What do I create next? You know, I've got five ideas for five different products or, you know, what do I, how do I ground it? So I see a lot of, and you know, and I, I hold my hand up here. I was, I've certainly done this myself, but the intuitive wealth part is actually about grounding your intuitive wealth and about, you know, your intuition is, is, trying to point you in the right direction <laughs> you know if you're watching this then then listen like this is a direction your intuition has called you to you know tuning into ray like connecting with ray and so on um your intuit your intuitive wealth is actually it's this it's this voice that you have wherever you might say it's from it could be your soul your higher self you know directing you towards like actually this is how you can create money in your life this is how you can create wealth in your life this is how you're going to grow and learn and stretch and this is the positive impact that your your wealth can actually create for you but also for others which is what i find most most light workers that's what they want to do they actually want to create you know money and wealth because they actually want to share you know share their gifts with others more more readily and, and lift them up too so that's really what intuitive wealth is about. And I've got um, a, a meditation, it's called Ignite Your Intuitive Wealth. And it's all about connecting those dots for yourself subconsciously. And it's about knowing that it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to do that. And it's really unleashing this power that people have been, even now, people are keeping a lid on it. Um, and yeah it's you can just <laughs> you can't keep on it anymore <laughs> yeah no you you can kind of like let you know uh let let it out um yeah to 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 shine to shine your light uh, and that be because and again it's like in this day and age now we don't have to be afraid of shining our light you know or of, of being who we're supposed to be because it's more accepted compared to years and years ago now there is so much more that's accepted in life that is absolutely amazing yeah yeah 
And I think as you know, something that I learned as well, I think there's, um, I think the art of discernment. So you can discern who you have your, um, you know, your conversations with. It's not that you're hiding anything from anyone, but you can discern like, actually, I'm going to have, you know, for instance, if you're having a conversation with Ray, then you could really talk about angels and la la la. You know, perhaps with your, you know, your manager at work or maybe you can't have maybe you could have those conversations but maybe i used to have them <laughs> yeah exactly well, yeah so, but, you know, so maybe that's not the you know that's for them that might not be the, yeah. the subject of choice you know yeah. so it's about having that um knowing that you can speak and then if you ever find that sort of thing oh i don't know just think well, that's just some discernment that's coming on your mm. part that you don't need to to go there with others but we're in this such a rich time where we can you know, and all the, certainly all the other, you know, our guides um, from many different dimensions, it's really, you know, they're watching us with fascination for what we're doing. Um, they're watching us from this perspective of, um, you know, wow, like they think like we're the magicians, <laughs> you know, and it is, it is quite something to incarnate into this third dimension. It really is, even though, and I've had these days, so I'm not like um, like Pollyanna here because I've had those shitty, crappy, dark days. Yeah, we've all had those. Yeah. Um, even on those days like that, it's like, you know something? One, you're not the only person to have a shitty day. And secondly, it's like, it's okay. Just give yourself some space. Whatever that that looks like for you, you know? And the other thing is, there is you might not want to get help there and then if you're having that kind of bad date but there is so much help out there there's so much support there's so much information um that now you will always get to choose and maybe all you can do is you know listen to listen to a song that you like listen you know it doesn't yeah. have to be fix yourself all in one afternoon it can just be a little thing that's going to work for you on that day you know yeah and yeah and, and it's something you know that that um I, I think everyone should be aware of you know even when you're doing spiritual work and you know um you've you're kind of like very far you know advanced in it etc you still need to have those times where you go and um you know speak to somebody or you get the healing or the, the guidance for, for something in, in your life because we don't know all the answers ourselves again which is why community and um it's, it's it's so important because you can connect with so many people and even people doing the same work as you so you know it's not a competition um you know any anymore it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like you can go to those other you know those other people that do the same thing as you do and get help from them and they mm -hmm. can do and they can do the same same from you um, because you'll be attracting different people to you but you've got that support network and and I, th I think that's 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 quite important I think that's where we're moving to now is that people that are healers um, work with the light um, spirituality are now starting to go actually we don't need to be separate we don't need to worry about the the other person because we can all create the same thing and be support to each other. Mm -hmm. And, it, it, you know, even so, I mean, I don't want to say uh, to some extent, those who are watching this and those who have awakened, you, you're still somewhat in the minority on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's plenty of room for you. There really is plenty of room for your awakening and there's plenty of room for you and your gifts there. You know, oh. there's, that all the space there is is ready for you it's it's um, infinite how, how many yeah. billions of people are there on this planet yeah yeah it's a very popular place to incarnate at the moment um and and people are still so definitely there's a strata of um young awakees as it mm. were and then there's there's definitely a large majority who's who just still aren't there and there's that is fine that's they they are just as divine beings as those who have exactly. consciousness it doesn't mean to say we're better or that it's no. just with sometimes we talk different languages as you know energetically perhaps that's what's going on um so yeah and it is you know to incarnate on mother earth it is just um yeah it's a very unique experience and it's yeah. an experience that your soul has 
you know longs for and wants to revel in and there is this something else I should say there is the law of polarity which is like the contrast is sometimes how people refer to it and that is really uh, that is really act- <laughs> not that it's never not active but at the moment the contrast is but seems very extreme you know um so that's not anyone's imagination is just like you know on one side it's like oh how beautiful and then the other's like oh my god that's so dark you know um that's kind of where we are energetically at the moment as a collective consciousness, you know, and the most important thing is for you to know that you're all right. You're not, you're more than all right. Actually, you're absolutely a generous gifted light worker. However, and you might not be a healer as such. You might just be, you might have a, a role somewhere. I don't know what it might Certainly. be. But... Yeah, you, you could be the most perfect teacher for children, you know, work, 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 working in a nursery, but you bring yeah. your gifts and talents to help those children develop um it, in, in into what you know even um uh, you know a canteen i don't know if they're still called canteen ladies oh dinner ladies dinner ladies <laughs> yeah i always i i i used to, I, used to, I, oh, I love this I, I love the skin on the custard they do always save it for me i was one of those weird kids i have the skin um it's <laughs> uh, back to my children uh, but you know even even then you know that you know that can be a gift as well because you're interacting with that child and you know you could be bringing light and energy and happiness to that child that may not have that somewhere else yeah and i and i think that's the other thing sort of like knowing inside that you're this light work and you you might be public about that you might you might want to be private each mm. is, that's your that's your choice that is always that's always a good choice your choice is always a, the best choice you can make um you know what I would say is, is to really respect that about yourself, respect that about yourself, that you really are and respect it. It's very, um, and that space that you hold, you know, particularly as women, that space that you hold for others, um, you don't know, you might have your words that day doesn't mean for people to step over you now or walk all over you. But, you know, I've certainly had days where someone has, um, they've like smiled at, well, I had laryngitis once and I was trying to Christmas shop, you know, and honestly, and bear in mind, it was Christmas. It was chaos. It was, you know, I mean, anyone in, in retail, mm. retail or anyone shopping knows what that's, that's like that frantic time of year. And honestly, those, every single assistant was so lovely to me. And I went out sort of thinking, I really don't feel like doing this, but I, I have, you know, cause of the yeah. time there's a deadline and all of that. And so though everyone was like so lovely and kind to me, you don't know what that little gesture of kindness might be. It might be letting someone go ahead in in front of you in the traffic. It might be um, just holding a door for someone. It might be um, telling someone that, I don't know, their label's hanging out, whatever it might be. If you come from that place of, you know, I'm, you don't know how transformative that could be for the other person to know that they're seen and heard and that it's okay, you know, cause we're all going to have times of vulnerability in one way or another. And for someone to show you that little bit of kindness or that just goes a long way, you know, and, and know yourself, respect your gifts because they are valuable and you are valuable. And I, hold of there's a, a group on facebook called so worthy you and what i say to, you know certainly when i'm leading meditations like you are you are so worthy you are already worthy you don't have to go and prove anything you are already so worthy of whatever you desire what you dream you are so worthy it's just about allowing sometimes it's about allowing your ego to catch up to that that's sort of the connector <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's 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 absolutely um, uh, you know you know brilliant with 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 everything you you've said today, um, and and, that, and it it make it makes it makes so much sense. Um, now, as usual, um, when I have a guest on, um, I like to ask the guests whether they would like a angel card reading for themselves or and those watching, or whether they would like a guided a guided meditation. So, Elena, what would you like me to do? I would love an angel card reading for everyone watching. <laughs> Why not? Why not? And you as and you as well. And me. Oh yes, of course me. And you? Yeah, gotta have you. As well. <laughs> this is good. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You you've got to have the you've got to have the, you've got to have the reading as well. Um, now, as uh, some of you may may know, um, when I do um, angel cards, I actually do it for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Um, I'm very much for everything being in the present. So although I work um, and do past life regression and I do future life progression. They are all tools um, that I use um, to help bring you back to the present. So if you heal your past, you don't worry about it. So you can be fully present. If you know your future and what's happening, you're not worried about it. So you're fully back in the present. So everything I do is, is for the present. And with angel cards, again, it's for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. So let's just see. So... What does Elena and everyone who's watching this show need to know for their highest good for the same time? What does Elena and everyone who's watching this show need to know for the highest good? Okay. okay. <laughs> See, I, I just love angel cards. Um, first light, beginning a new cycle. Yeah. Which, which is absolutely apt and, um, you know, mo mo most perfect. I mean, this has got all the seasons um, on, on, on the card. And it is like, say, you know, we're now in a state where we can begin that new new cycle you know this is an exciting time to be now and any new projects that you've got um, going or that you're starting are actually going to be turning out pretty good um <laughs> in, in this so you know it's it's, it's it's absolutely amazing so you know so 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 that new project um and that is well worth um it's well worth it's well worth taking off, uh, you know. And for, and for that, and for those watching, you know, any new projects or thoughts or ideas um, that you're thinking, do it. It the, the card is saying, go ahead, do it. <laughs> that is because I'm just about to go. I was just channel like this, this morning. I've been doing it for a, a while now, but I've just recorded um, the Goddess Monitor, and this is about really connecting women for sure, but really everyone to, yeah. to this divine feminine energy of money and the other thing is akashic wealth streaming and i'm like you know as much as i'm guided to do it and i 100 percent believe in it there is still i am a human being too there's still this part of me is like i'm really vulnerable out here so thank you ray so much for that that's blessing. okay that's okay that's what the angels are saying so those so, so you've got your you've got your confirmation and that, so Elena, before we go, do you have any insights or a last thought to leave people for watching? Um, what I would say, any insights, I would say look at look at what you consume and look at what you create. It's not to beat yourself up, but to have just that little self-assessment, because I think there are a lot of people are consuming without creating if that makes sense so look at what you're creating in your life and it doesn't have to be physical it can be energetically around you whatever your, your family whatever it might be and also look at about where you want to go in your life and one of the the sometimes it might not be easy but one way to get there is actually by getting support as well so look at how how are you asking to receive that support in your life um because that's something for me in the last year i've been more open to that and it's changed things for me hugely so that's really what i want to pass on to other people and that's what ray and i that's what our work is all about so yeah. it is yeah very much very much supporting people on their journey so that they can spread their wings and they can go on and inspire and help other people and support other people as well mm -hmm. and uh, so everyone, I hope you enjoyed this show and found it very insightful and that the words of wisdom Elena um, has given you will help you further on your journey. So Elena, if people want to um, connect with you, how do they do that? 
the best way is to go to um, I'm on Facebook so I have a Facebook page and a beautiful Facebook group called Soul Worthy You which is completely free I share lots of information in there very welcome to join that and then on my website there's um, ignite your intuitive wealth that's a free um, process and meditation to, you can download that and my website it's elenakeneely.com so i'll send you the the link ray and you can share that at some yeah. Point yeah 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 no I'll, I'll 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 put that um in in the comments um uh um at, at, at the bottom, bottom of the bottom of the show and that so everyone, I would like to thank you so much for watching and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you do. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Just reach out and connect with me um, and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute um, video call uh, where we can find out more about each other I can educate you on what I do and whether I can help you take charge of your destiny. And by the way, I will see you all next Wednesday at 8 p.m. for another fascinating conversation to help you on your spiritual, on your spiritual and personal growth. So Elena, again, thank you so much for um, being, being my guest. And we could, and I probably could have let you carry on talking if it wasn't for time. In fact, I'd love to. In fact, I'm going to have to have you back on the show again at some point in the future because. Um, you, you know, it's just been so fascinating listening to, to you and that. So, so please do come back at some point in the thank future. You. I'd love to. Thank you so much, Ray. Bless you. And thank you for everyone for watching. Yeah, thank you very much. And I will see you all next week. And please check out Elena's um, Facebook page. So, bye. Bye.